So you can see the heading is cubic inequalities because we are looking at the same cubic objects, but it's not a cubic equation. I've got a greater than zero here. I've got a less than or equal to zero here. So when we solve these things, right, do you notice this does not require a graph? This does not require a graph. The graph is a tool for us, right? So that's why I'm going to be a little more fast and loose with this drawing because it's a tool, it's a means to an end, okay? Now, in order to say, like, the solution of this in all these different ways which we've been looking at in functions so far in this topic, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this, see this bunch of symbols, I'm going to interpret that in a visual way, okay? So when I see this thing greater than zero, what I read is, when is this thing here, right? When is this function? And then it says greater than zero, greater than zero. So I mean above, greater than this x-axis here. So when is this function above the x-axis? Okay? That's the way I read that. I look at those symbols and I think, oh, there's a picture hiding behind this that I can use to help solve this. Okay? Now what we're going to do is really do a quick crash course of how can we use this thing to, f to look at what this function looks like and then I'm going to find out where is it above the axis. Right? It's in a nice neat factorized form, so we should be able to really quickly read off the x-intercept. Right? How do you read them off? How do you use the factorized form? Any takers? Think, 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 guys, this was this morning, right? I should be able to read a solution from each factor, right? What's the first one? Two, just before you go on. I'm getting two from this guy here, right? If I were to put x equals two into here, the whole thing would become zero, right? So that gives me an x-intercept, right? You can then read off what the other ones are. The next one, Rashan? Uh, negative, negative one, very good. If I put negative one into here, all the rest of it becomes zero. So I have another x-intercept. And my last one, of course, is positive five. positive five. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, I'm going to go from there straight over to my Cartesian plane, and I'm going to mark in those spots on the x-axis. These guys are my x-intercepts. So I've got, let's see here, uh, there's negative one, one, two, there's, neg there's two, three, four, five. There we go. Negative one, two, five. So I've got my numbers on there that I've read off of here. Okay. Now, in the morning we wondered, if you get these three intercepts, right, there are a couple of different ways that the snake of our graph can weave its way through them, right? So it's going to be either something that looks like this or something that looks like this, okay? Now, before what we did was we substituted some values in to see what would happen, okay? But in this case, I'm just going to draw your attention to the fact that were I to expand this whole thing, right, and don't do it, I just want you to think if you did, right? Have a look at the x cubed term. That's what makes this a cubic. Right? You're going to get some x squareds, you're going to get some x's, you're going to get a number at the end, but only one term will have an x cubed in it. What would be the sign in front of the x cubed? Would it be a plus or a minus? Positive. It's going to be positive. Now, how could you tell? Because you haven't actually expanded it. What did you use to work it out? What do you reckon, Sean? No yeah, very good. There are no negatives out in front of any of the x pronumerals, right? So therefore, since you've got positive x, positive x, x positive x, no matter what happens to the rest of it, your x cubed will be positive. That means you're going to get this guy here, right? Because as you get bigger and bigger values of x, it's going to get more and more positive. Do you see that? As opposed to this guy here, as you get bigger and bigger values of x, does it get more positive? No, it goes negative. No, bingo. It goes even more negative. So this is negative x cubed, this is positive x cubed. So I pretty much know all I need to know to now get a rough graph through here. It's going to go up. Right? Remember that? And then it's just going to kind of weave its way around like this. Okay? Now at the moment, I've got all the x-intercepts there and I just use that to get a general shape. I hope you notice I haven't gotten the y-intercept yet and at the end of this, once we've finished answering the question, I'm going to ask you why I didn't bother to find it. Okay? But for now, I'm going to go back to this blue writing. Right? I now know what the function looks like. So the question is asking, when is that function above the x-axis, and you can kind of see those portions, can't you? Uh, if you've got another color, I'd love you to grab that out. And um, when, whichever way you like, let's highlight the sections of this graph that are above the axis. Can anyone tell me where does the first section begin? 
Yeah, this, which dip did you, were you referring to? Between where and where? The top dip. This top bit? This guy here? Yeah. Or this guy here? That, that. This one here is where we start? Okay, so I'm kind of going to go from left to right. So like Sarain did, I'm going to start at this section here. And I'm just going to mark it in with another color just so I can see it. That part is clearly above the axis. So it agrees with what the, the question is asking. Okay. I do, of course, have another section. Where is it? Yeah, over this part here. So this is all above the x-axis, right? Uh, above y equals zero, which is because this is a y-axis and this is an x-axis, right? So these are the parts I want. Uh, have I got them all? No. Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with them. Okay, I've got a quick question for you, right? My um, my blue shading, right? It begins and ends, then it begins, and then it just keeps on going. Okay. Am I allowed to include the actual beginning and end? No. no, because that's the actual Now it does depend on the question that you get. In this case the answer is it's, it's no. Like How could I tell? How could I tell? Yeah, see this guy here? What this is saying is I want you to not just be like on the axis, you have to be above the axis. So you're not allowed to equal it. So these guys here, I'm going to draw some big hollow circles like so. Does that make sense? They're not included. Alright, now at this point the graph has served its purpose. I've worked out when the function is above the x-axis, so I'm ready to answer these three questions and state this blue thing in, um, in the terms that they've asked for, okay? Or that I've asked for. So here we go. Part A. As an inequality. So I've got this part here, and again, this is looking at what you did yesterday. Between negative 1 and 2, we can write this section in one fell swoop with just a single sort of grouped inequality. Can anyone tell me how am I going to write this? Just hold that thought, Ishan. You've had some good inputs already today. Can someone else help me out? Hmm. Yeah, what, go ahead. Negative 1 greater than, no, less than. Less than? X greater than. Now, before I write this next part, right, I want to be between here and here, yeah? So in other words, that's greater than negative 1, like 0 is okay. One's, half's okay, one's okay, but then do I want to be greater than two? That's that way, right? So I actually want to be less than two, yeah? So I'm going to write less than, then I'm going to write less than again, like so, okay? Why do you want to be less than two? Here's two, and in here, within this little boundary is the section that's okay, that I highlighted in blue, Why is it okay? right? Because this is the part of the graph that is above the x-axis. Oh, but to the right, it's not really. Yeah, well, this part isn't. Right? See that part over there? It's not. There's the line on the top. Yeah, this one here, I haven't got to it yet. Right? Oh. So I'm just thinking about this bit oh, first. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. 